things to do ashore. Now, I just want to remind you guys. Come on, loudspeaker. We got no time for a lecture. Chips has got a stage at the Blue Boy. He's got me all ironed out with a blonde. We'll all be ironed out by the legs. To me, this is just a prelude to a court martial. Step on it, sailor. Come on. Gee, it sure is good to feel terracotta under your feet again. I'll still take a dance floor under mine. My toes is just itching to swing into a rumba. <laughs> It's the Brooklyn version, ain't it? Yeah. Wait till we get to the Bluebird. I'll show you. Hey, hey, where is this auto joint? My feet are killing me. There it is. Here's what will knock the Dolman's eyes out. Take care of the transportation. Yes. We want to rent a car. Four sailors in one car? Where are you going to sit the young lady? We'll take care of that. You just give us one with good, strong springs. I'll handle this deal. Now, uh, how about this jalopy? 11 cents a mile and a dollar an hour. You're dealing with the United States Navy. Army, Navy, and Marines. 11 cents a mile and a dollar an hour. The Navy is our first line of defense. It's the ring of floating steel that protects your home, your wife, and your children. I haven't got any children. Don't care about my wife. 11 cents. I know. A dollar an hour. No deal. Do we shove off for the Bluebird? Where else? I got a date to play patty cake with that blonde. Uh-uh. That place is out. What do you mean that place is out? I got a reunion with that redhead, and it ain't in Vienna. I'm taking all the responsibility, ain't I? I'm renting the car. Yeah, well, I do. That's a minor detail. I'm taking over the social end, too. I haven't missed yet, have I? On ship and on shore, that geezer's head gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, and that goes for his mouth, too. I'll take charge. I'll do this. I'll do that. Well, he comes true, don't he? Luck, that's all. Say. I got an idea that'll cure that guy's big head and his big mouth in one treatment. Yeah? He's supposed to be a lady killer, ain't he? Yeah. yeah. I saw a dame in a public library once. Where? Where? Now, don't get me wrong, boys. I just ducked in there out of the rain. Well, I took one gander at this dame and then ran right out again. Rain or no rain. That bad? Yeah. A bow wow. Uh, how does she fit in this scheme? Like this. I'll tell him that she's a pip, a knockout, a regular Miss America, and will he bite? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll make a bet. Biff, you got a brain. It's the age of miracles. But listen, mister. No. But I got nothing doing. Okay, it's a deal. Pipe down, here he comes. Okay, we're all set. What's the tariff? I beat him down to 11 cents a mile and a dollar an hour. It's a steal. I smell fine. Did you guys have me on the pan again? Oh, I didn't Rusty. say a lie. What's the matter with thing like that? Of course. Since it ain't the Blue Boys, where are we headed? I haven't made up my mind yet. Drive through the park and we'll absorb the beauties of nature. Speaking of beauty, I know a gal here who's not only beautiful, but she's got brains. Just my type. Yeah, that's what I was telling the boys. Why have you been hiding her? I'd like to meet her. <laughs> Wouldn't do you any good. Uniform means nothing to her. Say, you think that's all I get by on is a uniform? That line you reel out to Goldie and those other dames wouldn't go with her. You wouldn't like to make a little bet, would you? Mouth money won't buy you anything, sailor. I'll tell you what. We'll give you until... until the ship leaves to take her out. Oh, I don't need that long. No? How about a week then and 25 bucks if you do it? Oh, what? Marry the girl? No, that's too easy. Just take her to the Crow's Nest Cafe. 25 bucks even money? Yeah, but since you ain't got 25 bucks and not a chance of getting it, you wash our shirts, our dungarees, and keep our shoes shine for a month. You're on. The bet. In there, sailor. A library, eh? Well, I've been in libraries before. They don't scare me. Don't you think you need an introduction? Coming from you, Chips, ought to be a handicap. Hey, how I know her? She's got on a pair of glasses as thick as cookies. You know the type. <laughs> What may 
I do for you? I'd like something in the way of a book. Any particular book or just something in the way of a book? I came for, uh... Hammersmith's Advanced Algebra. I have some studying to do. Good old Hammersmith. Old books, you know, are like old friends. Very interesting. May I have your name, please? Russell J. Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S. Seaman? Well, I can't really say, because I'm going to be a midshipman very shortly, you know. I don't know. You may take the book to the table and read until closing time. Is there something else? You'll let me know when it is closing time, won't you? Because when I get engrossed in a book, the hours just fly. Are those friends of yours? We're in the same Navy. Of course, when I'm an officer, they'll have to keep their distance. But you're not an officer yet. Not exactly. But it's just a matter of time and pass the examinations for Annapolis. Then you better get back to your algebra. We're closing shortly. Good afternoon, Miss Kimball. How do you do, Mr. Everett? Are you taking any other books now? I think not. I thought perhaps that wait, you might like to walk home. Oh, I'd love to. Splendid. Meanwhile, I'd like to glance over Hammersmith's algebra. Oh, I'm sorry, it's being read. You don't mean it's out of the library? No, the sailor has it. Sailor? Did he ask for it specifically? Yes, he seemed to know what he wanted. You suppose he'd mind if I looked to see if I left some notes in it? I don't think so. I beg your pardon. A four. May I look at this book for a moment? Thank you. No. Isn't it about time to close? I'm sorry, but we're about to close. Right in the middle of a problem. Well, I'm terribly sorry. I hate to go. There's something about a library... Well, you're welcome to come back any time. If I had another ten minutes, I'd have this problem pinned right to the mat. Well, if it's so important to you, I might waive a rule. You may take the book back to the ship with you. Well, thanks a lot. I'd bring it back personally, if I knew your name. Just bring it back. Goodbye, Mr. Gibbs. What's keeping him? According to you, one look and he'd run. I don't know. He must be a glutton for punishment. Hey, look. Competition. Every man to his taste. Thanksgiving or something. She's all made up like a pilgrim. It'll take a brave man to wheel that museum piece into the crow's nest. Oh, uh, shall we walk? Why, sure. It's a nice day for it. 
I understand you're going to Annapolis. Oh, yeah. Not this minute. I suppose you're wondering whether it's proper to ask me in. Nice homey atmosphere. Well, Julian, might present your friend. He's not my friend. Doris? No, don't make any fuss on my account, folks. We were just walking and talking and here we are. My name is Gibbs. Russell Gibbs. Uh, Mr. Gibbs is a candidate for Annapolis. He came in to study some algebra. Algebra? Algebra? Why, why I haven't heard that word in this house for years. Uh, this is Mr. Gibbs. He's studying algebra for his entrance examinations to Annapolis. Uncle teaches mathematics at the Central High School. Hi, Uck. Oh, yeah. It's nothing like algebra to tone up the mental processes, eh, young man? Right you are, Professor. <laughs> yes. uh, just have a seat over there, won't you, Mr. Gibbs? There's a quaint problem in quadratics I just ran across. Good old quadratics. Oh, I see you're studying Hammersmith. Well, you won't get much out of him. That's just the way I feel about it. An academic fraud, that Hammersmith. Of the worst kind. Well, of course, Julian. I knew you wouldn't take up with a common sailor. Doris, I'm surprised. And shocked, too, I suppose. Well, there's nothing common about Mr. Gibbs. If he had his officer stripes, you'd be delighted to have him call. Now, since factoring A square, we arrive at 2AB plus B square minus A square over 2AB. Now, Hammersmith's contention is... Sure, sure. Scoot over, Uncle. Oh. Here's your beef tea. Uh, so you see how it is that the Euclidean science has degenerated. Oh, it's all shot to pieces. Drink it, Uncle. Then you've got to take your nap. Thanks, Professor. Goodbye. Goodbye. I've had a nice, instructive afternoon. I'll see Mr. Gibbs to the door. Well, folks, you'll be coming in tomorrow again, Gibbs. We'll go into quadratics still deeper. Yes, sir. We'll dig right in. <laughs> we'll make an admiral of you yet. Well, goodbye. See you tomorrow. Oh, pardon me, Gibbs. Since you're coming back, you might as well leave that book. Oh, not Hammersmith. Oh, no. I'm hanging out of this place. So long. Pay me off? We'll pay off when you take her to the crow's nest. Not just home. This is one penny's going to pay off. We can't lose. I'll see to that. You got an idea? Come on. Okay, Nijinsky, the ballet's over. Boy, am I ready. Am I in the pay? What for? It's a fine time to ask. I thought you was going to get me a fight on shore this week. Yes, I know, but I'm thinking of the future. What's going to become of you, Biff? Me? Why, you told me I was headed for the fleet championship. Just as I thought. No ambition outside of getting your ears battered down. Now, you want to make something of yourself, don't you, Biff? Sure. Well, then you got to educate yourself. Train up here. You got five dollars? For what? The five dollars is for the professor. What professor? The professor that's going to improve your brain, if possible. Gosh. Yes, sir. You're going to have some scholasthenics. Scholasthenics? Is it going to hurt much? No, it wouldn't hurt a baby. It's only algebra. Oh. Yes, sir. You're going to start right now. On Sunday? A holiday? Well, that's the idea. The professor's at home. Good afternoon. Come right in. Hello, Doris. I brought my friend. Miss Kimball, this is Gerald Jones. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. I want Biff to meet your uncle. Well, uncle is looking forward to an afternoon of algebra. So is Biff. Hello, folks. This is my friend Jones. Professor, this is Biff that I was telling you about. Uh -huh. Pleased to meet you. Oh, yeah. And this is Miss... Um, Doris. Uh, pardon me. Sure. 
Hey, what's the idea? That's the dame from the library. Pipe down. Oh, Professor, I told Biff that you'd help him over the early rough spots. Well, I had intended to devote this afternoon to you. Oh, I'll catch up. I simply will not have it. The very idea. Turning this house into a sailor's snug harbor. Andy, I think they're perfect gentlemen. I'm letting Biff have the benefit of your uncle's hospitality this time. I'll make a petty officer out of him yet. That's very generous of you. Well, we have the afternoon to ourselves. Maybe you'd like to go out and hear a lecture or something. Doris? Uh Well, that's very nice. I'll get my wraps. Uh, come, come, Mr. Biff. Uh, let's sit down over here. Do you really want to go to a lecture? Do you? Well, it's such a lovely day and... Would you like to do something different? Different? Different for you. One of those places where ordinary sailors go on shore leave. No, I don't think I would. Well, there's a place I know where you can see the sun setting over the hills, making the bay all purple and gold. Okay. I haven't seen the bay in 20 minutes. Uh, how are your binomials, Jones? Binomials? <laughs> Get a load of those. No, I said uh, binomials. Uh, have you studied any algebra at all? Algebra? No. English is good enough for me. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I don't think you understand. Uh, do you know anything about mathematics? Well, uh, for that matter, uh, simple arithmetic. Arithmetic? Now we're getting somewhere. But you know, there's one thing that always stumped me. Yes, what's that? Long division. Uh, <clears throat> do you want to get into Annapolis, too? Annapolis, me? Why, I couldn't get in there on a visitor's pass. No, why not? I'm kind of old age. I'm 26. 20 is the limit. Oh, I see. Andrew. Uh, what is it, Beulah? I will not have this house overrun with those shabby mariners. Well, there's nothing shabby about them, Beulah. Except their motives. Now, you take this Gibbs person. Dusty, or whatever his friends call him. How do I know where he's luring Doris to? Oh, well, she's probably luring him to some round table discussion. And that'll end it. Well, I hope so. Julian's the suitor for her. He's a young man of culture. Yeah, too much culture. Has he ever taken her to a dance or, well, for that matter, to a uh, uh, shindig? Andrew, shindig. Andrew. know this place too? He doesn't like it. Well, I do. Just because he doesn't? Maybe. You're staring. I didn't mean to, but I just noticed there's something on your cheetahs. Cheetahs? Your glasses. Oh, yes. Everything does seem a bit hazy. I'll fix it. difference. How do I look? Terrible. Then why do you wear them? Well, I read a lot. Maybe too much. Well, they're supposed to save my eyes from strain. But you can see without them. Well, yeah. Four goes into 17 four times with one over. Oh, how's this going to help me win my next fight? Are you a boxer? A leading contender for the Pacific Fleet title? Well, uh, I indulged in the manly art myself years ago at college. Yeah? What name did you use? 
They called me Bruiser Wayne. I want to show you something. That's me in 1906, the night before I flattened Harvard's chair. See, with them pillows, you sure must have had a sock. Oh, did I? Let me show you. Now, it was in the middle of the third round. He was just throwing punch after punch and exhausting himself when I stepped in. My glasses, please. Gee, they slipped out of my hand. They're broken and I have another pair. Well, now, don't be angry. You don't need those to look at this beautiful sunset. The moonlight is just as beautiful from here. On your recommendation, we'll give it a play some night. But not on Wednesday, because you and I could do a little hoofing. Hoofing? Dance. I'd like to take you someplace you've never been before. Where? Best place I can find. How about the Embassy Club? Oh, I couldn't go there. I wouldn't fit. You would, only... Only what? Take a good look in the mirror without your glasses. I'll do that. And then if you really want to see something, get yourself a permanent wave. Yes? And then put on a dress that's got, uh, you know. And then for my sake, take off those shoes. But they're sensible. Yeah, that's the trouble with them. I don't know how long you've been wearing this disguise, but I'm going to be around Wednesday night to see the unveiling. Well, I'm afraid I'll keep you away from your studies. Studies? Yes, for Annapolis. Supposing I wasn't going to Annapolis after all. Supposing I was just an ordinary seaman. But you are going. Dollar, I beg your pardon. Why, I, I'd scarcely know you without your glasses. A gentleman would have not. I finally got the tickets. Perfectly marvelous seats. It's Beethoven's ninth, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, but Wednesday night I'm going huffing with Mr. Gibbs. Huffing? Huffing. Dancing. What? Why, what would your aunt and uncle say? I got him groggy, see? So I faint for a button and he ups with his guard. Uh, that's... He was vulnerable. Well, that was his weak point, too. So I wailed across with the right and placed him one in the bread bag. Yeah, then what happened? I lost. Oh. Wait a second. Here. Put this on your arm. You shouldn't have done this. I know it'll get us into trouble. No, it won't. It'll phony him up like a four-dollar bill. Here. Look! They're strapping. What a chance. Now I can get a few licks at that big mouth. Come on. More sailors. <laughs> referee or no referee, there was no stopping me. Andrew. I uh, was just showing Mr. Jones, dear, how I used to... I've seen enough. My home's becoming an annex to the Navy Yard. <laughs> Fighting with civilians, huh? Where's Gibbs? Hey, since when did you guys become shore patrol? Never mind about that. You better get back to the ship if you don't want any trouble. Uh, what's Gibbs done? That's what he's set to do. Oh, I'll never live down this disgrace. You got a right to feel bad, lady. Come on, where is he? He went out with the dame. Dame? It's a good thing I didn't find that mug here. Mug? Uh, uh, Gibbs is your superior in rank, isn't he? He's what? He says he's a candidate for Annapolis. <laughs> Annapolis? <laughs> well, did he try to hand you that stuff? Why, he couldn't bribe his way in there. That's right. Same trouble as me. Old age. We want to warn you about that guy Gibbs, ma'am. He... Yes. He's a... <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> so long. You better take that off your arm, Gateway. Hey, you fellas shouldn't have done that. So he was handing out the old Annapolis line, huh? Well, he'll have a hard time talking himself out of this one. Come on. And she all but defied me to go out with that disreputable sailor. I'll not mince words with her when she comes home, if she does come home. Now, Beulah, let me handle this matter. Very well, just as long as you throw that Gibbs person out bodily.
Well, Professor, how'd you find Biff? I found he has an armor-plated skull. Sort of low mental visibility, eh? Uh, if you'll excuse me. Why, well, sure, Professor. I'll have to be shoving off myself. Oh, uh, Julian, won't you stay to tea? I'd be delighted. <clears throat> so long, Doris. Goodbye. Until Wednesday. Right. Doris? I forbid you to have anything more to do with that good-for-nothing maritime loafer. Since when have you begun to forbid me things? Please, don't waste your time with him, Doris. He's an imposter. What do you mean, he's an imposter? He's been lying to you about Annapolis. I can't believe The law that... authorizes the appointment of 25 midshipmen each year, selected by competitive examination of enlisted men. Candidates must be citizens who are not more than 20 years of age on April 1st of the year in which appointed. Pals again. Shipmates together. Look out. That shipmates together stuff means a touch. Ah, oh, there's the spirit of the sea for you. Suspicion. Jealousy. Hey, don't change that garb uniform. You can't wear civvies on this bet. Oh, I could win wearing a gunny sack. Hello, Bones. Good to see you. How you fix for folding money, Bonesy? Listen, if you pay me that nine bucks you owe me, I'll just make out. Where's Biff? Inside. Say, maybe Biff wised them up. We we're over to the girl's house, huh? Nah. If Rusty makes it, Biff stands to lose his third of the 25 bucks. Yeah, I figure mine's lost already. With me, it's the principle of the thing. With me, it's still the dough. I'd just as soon lose my dough to shut that guy up for once. I'd love to see the reception he's going to get when he gets over to the girl's house. Yeah. Let me five bucks. Well, I don't know now. Then advance me five. Well, that's the same thing, ain't it? But do I get it back quicker that way? You're getting awfully hard to deal with lately. I'm going to make you a gilt-edge proposition. Now, your share of that bet is $8.33. Well, roughly. I'll let you buy yourself out for eight. Will you? Say, that's awful whitey, yeah? Well, uh, you know I'm a cinch to win. You saw how I stand in with that family. Hey, I want to tell you about the professor. Oh, the prof, a nice guy. He's wise. They don't come any wiser. So long, Biff. I mean about Annapolis. Ah, oh, good evening, Mrs. Wayne. Has your charming niece got home yet? How dare you show your face around here, you... you gob! My niece is not at home to you now or ever. Now, that's no way to talk to a naval man, my dear Mrs. Wayne. Don't you dare, Mrs. Wayne, me. In the event of an invasion, what is our first line of national defense? The ring of floating steel. I don't care to hear any of your silly riddles. Go away. I'll come in and wait. You'll not get in here any sooner than you'll get in Annapolis. He's gone. Good night, Aunt Beulah. Doris, gosh, I hardly knew you. Please go away. Doris, you must listen. Miss Kimball doesn't want to be bothered. I'm not talking to you. You'll have to let me explain. Your friend Beth explained everything. I'm sorry, Doris. I'm really not interested. You must, or you are, or you wouldn't be doing this to yourself. You lied to me. I had to. If I told you I was just an ordinary sailor, you wouldn't have anything to do with me. But what are you? Well, I couldn't tell you then, and I can't now. Men in my branch of the service take an oath not to. What do you mean? Well, there's secrets in the Navy, and men are signed to guard those secrets. Now, do you understand? Intelligence service? Shh! It's not so loud. Doris, we'll be late. Will you tell him to leave? I've got to... Uh, no, I don't believe you. It's just another lie to explain the first one. I counted on you. I had a reason for asking you out tonight. Reason, but what? Just come along with me and don't say anything. You're not afraid, are you? No, but, uh, is it dangerous? Not for you, no. Now, really, Doris. Well, I'm sorry, but I really did have an appointment with Mr. Gibbs. What the symphony? Why don't you go home? Oh, isn't that a shame? 
all full of paint. Now, you can't go to the concert like that, can he? You better go home and change your clothes. Let's go. showed up yet. Well, he's got all night and he said he'd sure check in. He said more talk flows over that guy's lip than water over Niagara. Anyway, we got him stopped this time. How are you, boy? Hi, Goldie. How's it? Greetings, fair one. How are you, gentlemen? Have any of you seen the pride of the Navy, Rusty? Why, uh, Mr. Gibbs ain't slumming tonight. I understand he's entertaining at the Embassy Club. I heard tell he might drop in here for a little bit, but I wouldn't count on it if I were you. You know Mr. Gibbs. Hey, eh, boys? The Embassy Club? I ain't accustomed to having gentlemen friends stand me up. He made this date with me last week. Maybe he forgot to write it down on his social calendar. Biff, pencil Miss Goldie in for next week. <laughs> He'd better show tonight and show alone. Sit down with me, Biff. One little bead. Two beers. You choose beer, don't you? What's the matter, Bobby? Look at that, will you? Tell that guy something. Oh, don't start it. Let me go. I'm going to start his finish. Oh, write him a letter. Bad idea. He's grabbed himself the Admiral's daughter. Say, he's been holding out on us. He wants us to pay him. That ain't the librarian. He's trying to run in a ringer on us. May I? Surely. Hey, wait a minute. Let me have a pencil and paper. Yes, ma'am. Forgotten, you have a date with me tonight, you rat. Will you come over, or must I come and get you? If so, it'll spell danger for you, Goldie. Are you gonna let it go like that? Why don't you put in a P.S.? I like P.S.'s. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned it. P.S. That'll do it. Now that's got class. Hey, wait a minute. You know Rusty Gibbs? Sure I do. He's sitting right over there. I'll give him this note. I spotted my men. Just sit quiet for a minute. That's a message for Mr. Gibbs. He'll be back, won't he? Yes. Okay, boys, I'll take 25 bucks and fives a larger. Here are the fives you're going to get. It's a chip. What's your alibi, Piker? That girl's a ringer. We pay off on the librarian and nobody else. Oh, so that's it. We'll take another look, wise guys. Say, what are you trying to give us? That ain't her. Look at her hair. It's marvelous what the Gibbs treatment will do for a girl. Where's her cheaters? Oh, so that's it. Well, it looks like you have to be shown. Left this. I'm running into a little trouble. We may not be able to leave as soon as I expected. Is there anything wrong? Everything's going to be all right. Did you see what that heel done? Looks like a boy up to me. I'll show him. Oh, now, lay off. Don't make no trouble. I'll bring him over. Hoist him.
pardon me, lady. The lady's getting kind of hard to handle. You better come over and talk to her. Excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. You stay here with Doris. You, you, Doris? Of course I'm Doris, Bill. Well, you sound like her, all right. Well, aren't you sure? Well, what's your uncle's name? Andrew Wayne, why? That's right. Who's a Wayne? I'm sold. Do you know those men who went in there with Rusty? Them last two? Look like a couple of mugs to me. I was afraid something like this would happen. What's the matter? How about taking the babe on for a bit? Oh, not this trip, boys. Biff's overtrained. Maybe later on. Don't you understand? He was forced in there. Oh, I... not... Rusty is an intelligence officer and his life is in danger. What's that? An intelligent officer? Excuse me. Are you all right? Yes. Let's get out of here. Miss Kimball, I'm amazed. What would your aunt say if she knew you were here? How did you know we were here? Where else but in a dive would I look for you? Put these on. I just as soon no one got a good look at you as we leave here. My eight dollars and thirty-three cents. Well, I bought myself out for eight bucks. <laughs> you mugs never should have bet. Hey, maybe I shouldn't tell you guys, but Rusty's an intelligent man. A what? You know what I mean? Undercover stuff. No. Yeah, secret service. I guess I'd better give those glasses back to Julian. Oh, please don't leave me again. Just for a moment. still has the book. We might be naval intelligence. I have no proof yet. I'll see you tomorrow. You're going to get yourself in trouble if you don't stop following me. Let's go. Good night. Good night. Dr. Crowley will see you now, sir. the book? He still has it. On board or somewhere ashore? I don't know. Why not? Where'd he go last night? Straight to the ship. I followed him from the girl's house. Did he talk to anybody? Make any phone calls? No. Oh, I talked to a couple of other sailors from the Roanoke. <laughs> they say he's just a windbag. Well, whatever he is, he's got the key to the code. Either of you two know the crew has any idea why the Roanoke is tied up to the pier? No, and they think it's odd with the rest of the fleet ready to pull out on maneuvers. You still think the sailor taking the book was an accident? Well? I'm not so sure now. Well, one way or the other, I'll have to know why that sailor took that book. I thought you and that girl were pretty thick. Yeah, I kind of thought you were falling for her. Yeah. 
I don't mind that sailor edging in. That's what I want. If he knows anything, he may tell her. The book has me worried. It may be in Washington being checked right now. Cheerful crew on this ship. What's that you're playing? Funeral march? It's a piece called La Alakisa. It means pigeon in mountain Italian. A linguist, eh? It means a special kind of pigeon. Stool pigeon. Brr, what a chill. Of all the guys turn out to be a heel, intelligence man. Squealer, you mean? Undercover guy. I wonder when he's going to start turning us in. He must have plenty on us. Rusty sure got plenty on me. What's he got? Well, I broke a regulation. I've been breaking it for a long time. Can't you quit? Uh, it's too late. If he turns me in now, I'm sunk. Why don't you beat him to the punch? If you don't, he'll lead you a dog's life. How do you mean? Report to the exec. It'll make it easier on you that way. Say, you're smart, Chips. That's what I'll do. If the lieutenant pleases, sir, I want... I want to... What do you want, Jones? Well, sir, I want to make a confession. It's been on my conscience for a long time. Well, if it's a matter of your conscience, you'd better see the chaplain. Well, no, sir, it's about regulations. Well, all right, speak up. What is it? Well, it's this, sir. I want to make a clean breast of it. Mm. That breast will take some cleaning. Well, that's all right. Keep your shirt on. Nobody will be any the wiser. Yeah, but that ain't all, sir. More? Yes, sir. This. Stop it. Regulations forbid tattooing of a figure like that. Yeah, I know, sir. That's why I told you with an intelligent man on board. The what? Yes, sir. Signal in first class Rusty Gibbs. I thought I'd come to you before he turned me into Washington. Oh. Well, put some clothes off the team and everything will be all right. Dismiss. Gee, thank you, sir. Thanks. Sir, there's talk on board that Signalman Gibbs is an intelligence officer. Lieutenant Bridges reports, sir, that Signalman Gibbs is believed by the crew to be an intelligence officer. Gibbs? You mean the would-be boxing promoter? Yes, sir. It may be a sailor's joke. I'll take the proper steps. Priority message, the Chief of Navigation, Naval Department, Washington. Gibbs isn't in the Intelligence Department. He's not one of my men. Does this revise your plans for Lomensny? No. Unless we receive further information, he will leave Washington by air and board the Roanoke. If anything should happen to him while he is in this country, or on board the Roanoke, Consequences will be serious. These foreign diplomats. <laughs> I know how you feel. They're always being chased by imaginary assassins. Yes, and we have to play nursemaids to them and then give them our ships as ferry boats. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think the immediate arrest of Signalman Gibbs is indicated here? No, 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 but I'll have him carefully watched. It's your responsibility. message would have you intelligence people swarming on the row enough. Is there anything I can do? Yes. I wish you'd assign me to Gibbs section and keep everyone out of there for an hour. Glad to.
Is all trace of the Hammersmith lost? You fellas have a time enough to get it back. Gibbs hasn't brought it back to the library. And we can't go through a battleship looking for it. It's no laughing matter, boys. We can keep checking. That is, until a substitute code comes. I imagine he may be on his way here. And if he is, we'll have to finish the job in a hurry. Fella Gibbs is a problem. You know where he is? I know where he might be. Wait a minute, Biff. Yes, sir? I think I'm going ashore presently. I want you to keep your eye on things. Oh, going stepping, sir? I'm meeting a lady. <laughs> oh, I get it. A Randy's vu. Official stuff, huh? No, social. Miss Kimball. Now... Oh, now listen, Rusty. I'm short on dough. You're paid up, but I got other money coming to me. No. My winnings from the bet. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Hmm, so did Chips and Gateleg. Tell them I'll stand for no nonsense. Eight dollars and thirty-three cents apiece. Correct. I'm appointing you my agent. You'll get a commission. Already? A petty officer, maybe. No, you dope. Commission on the collection. Oh, that'll be easy when I tell them I'm your agent. That's the idea. Put the pressure on him. What's on your mind? You're worried about something. You may as well know I am worried. About what? Did you know that someone followed you after you left me the other night? You've been reading too many books in your library. You're beginning to imagine things. Doris, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. And when I tell you, these ghosts you've been seeing will disappear. I hope. They're not ghosts. I lied to you about Annapolis. Just so as I could get to know you. How many times do I have to forgive you for that one white lie? Doris, there's something I want to tell you. I love you, honey. And no matter what happened at the start, I love you now. Do I have to say that too? Well, maybe you won't want to after you hear what else I've got to say. I don't want to hear you say anything else. I've got to. I lied to you the second time. I'm just a sailor. An ordinary sailor. You're trying to say you're not in the naval intelligence? I've seen too much to believe that. There's someone watching us from the window. Hello, Doris. Hello. I thought you was here, but I wasn't sure till I looked in. What's up? Payday at the mines. Chips and gate they come across. How about my commission? You know, you promised me a split. Besides, Doris ought to get a share. Hey, cut it out. He wouldn't have won the bet without your help. What bet? Well, wasn't you in on it? Hey. Rusty bet the boys he could take you on a date to the crow's den. They wasn't sure it was you at first. But when Rusty put the cheetahs back on your eyes, it was a panic. They were sold. That's pretty cheap. Doris! you want it that way? Sure, I made that bet. Why else would I have bothered with a freak like you? A freak? Well, that's what you were. I changed you over from a crow, a bookworm. Made you into a girl that could take a pick of anything. A crow? Let me go before I call the police. All right, I'll go. You can go back to your Julian. He's just your speed. Before you go back to your Navy Yard, just take a look at that sign. Yes, sir. Come with me. May I ask the lieutenant? Get in the car. Begging the lieutenant's pardon, I'm due back to my ship. Get in. Can I find out where I'm being taken? Well, that's one time his big mouth didn't say it. 
Hammersmith's algebra identified as code key espionage ring. Group responsible explosion in airplane carrier Dolphin. Believed now engaged in plot against Lamazny. Arrest Gibbs. Gibbs is AWOL. Send his description to the shore authorities. Order his arrest and the arrest of anyone found with him. Meanwhile, I'll call Washington. Now, there's a shore connection. Hello. This is Spencer aboard Cruiser Roanoke. Get Admiral Cummings. Federal 8000, Washington. Right. Gibbs must have cleared out as soon as he missed the code book. No doubt. There's a definite link between the disappearance of Gibbs and this Lomazny matter. I believe that... Hello. Oh, yes, Admiral. We changed our plans regarding the Baron. He's en route incognito. He's aboard the intercoastal plane arriving Millerfield, 11 p.m., your time. Yes, by all means, get Gibbs. Hold this man for naval authorities. Use extreme caution in making arrests. This man may be dangerous. Yeah, try and find him. Ready to talk yet? Why, sure. I've been busting with thought for the last 24 hours. Has naval intelligence deciphered any of our messages by means of Hammersmith algebra? I'll bite, have they? Turn it on again. Say, you guys ought to turn me over. I'm done on this side. Cars outside, you and Lawson. Be quiet. Just walk out and don't make a sound. Don't tell me this is matter, Harry. I might have known that you were at the bottom of this. That's right. Blame this on me, too. Well, who else? Couldn't by any chance be babyface Everett, could it? Julian? I should say not. Well, that just goes to show you. We live and learn. Not that I don't approve, but why are you strapped to that chair? It's just a gag. I'm playing sit-down strike. You can sit here. You'd better. They don't like no for an answer around here. Why was I brought here this way? Now, uh, you're going to start asking questions. Julian. Yep, Julian J. Frankenstein, Jr. He's got a little surprise for you. I'm awfully sorry, Doris. Gibbs got you into this trouble. Dear, dear. <laughs> I can vouch for Miss Kimball. She has nothing to conceal and she'll speak freely. Say yes to everything, Doris. You mind your own business. Uh, just a few simple questions. If your answers are satisfactory, I'll see that you get home safely. Why did you turn that copy of Hammersmith's algebra over to him? So he could study algebra. Ha <laughs> ha, that's telling him. And not because you were paid by naval intelligence to work with him? I don't know what you're talking about. Tie her up. Julia! You had your chance. Hey, man of culture, that's no way to treat a lady. Maybe that's the Marines. Dr. Crowley? Yes. Sign here, please. Line eight. Thank you. Say, Frankenstein, if that's for me, tear it up. From Erickson, Crowley's been waiting for this. I hope it's bad news. It is, for you. The gray coat. This is your last chance to talk. All right, you got me. I'll talk. Well? You're a couple of very naughty boys. When I get out of here, I'm going to give you the beating of your lives. Rusty, I'm proud of you. Thanks. I'm sorry. I understand everything now. If you do, you're one up on me. I still can't figure it out. Don't worry. They won't be able to force it from me. Force what from you? You know about you. 
Me? <laughs> what do you know about me? You work for the intelligence. I don't work for the intelligence, and I don't know anything. All right, if that's what you want me to believe. Ah, uh, what's the use? Fidel, point four six. That's inter... Wait a second. Intercoastal. There's another point six. That's Miller Field. Someday I'm going to make up for all the trouble I let you in for. You don't have to apologize for anything to me. I'm only worried about Uncle Andrew and Aunt Beulah. Oh, now don't worry about them. Who's going to bother a nice little fellow like your uncle? This is an outrage. It's a rank induction. Quiet, Professor. Uncle Andrew! Doris, guess I spoke too soon. Hope you guys don't run out of chairs. I'm sorry, Professor. It seems that even teaching algebra has its occupational hazards. Now, why do they have to grab you? Well, I couldn't convince him I wasn't concealing a copy of Hammersmith's textbook. Good old Hammersmith. He's in again. Of all the books in the library, I had to take that one. Well, if I live to be a hundred... You might, if you give the right answer. But what is it? You got me there, Professor. When did this come? A little while ago. It's all deciphered. Lamagnese arriving incognito at Miller Field in the next plane. That gives us an hour. They could have told us that. Sure, us and Hammersmith. If this wire is correct, we've got less than an hour to reach the field. How do we know who Lamazny is? I'll know Lamazny. Three musketeers. Looks like Mr. Lamansky's in for a lot of trouble, that's all I can say. Well, our prospects don't look any too rosy either. It was a mistake picking up those three. If you don't hear from me by 11.30, you're on your own. All right. I feel like the prisoner of Zender. How can you joke at a time like this, Uncle Andrew? They might murder that man, Lomazny. Well, if they don't, I'd like to. He got us into this mess. I thought intrigue like this went out with the Franco-Prussian War. It did, but it's back now. Hold that. Turn it around so I can get my hands on that switch. I'd like to see your Aunt Beulah's face, Doris, when she finds out what her gentle Julian is really like. Keep talking, somebody. I love you, Rusty. Maybe I didn't always trust you, but from the first I loved you. Now you're talking. Keep going that way. Must be a beautiful night out. Well... Oh, uh, yes, it's beautiful out. The sky full of stars. The lights blinking on the water. No, not blinking. To your left. 31, they're all in oak. Keep talking. Uh, poor Aunt Beulah. She must be almost frantic with worry. Yes, I, I can just see her suffering in silence. Don't talk to me, young man. I'm a citizen and a taxpayer. Both my grandfather saw service, and I have a perfect right to see the Admiral. The Admiral is not concerned in your complaint against Seaman Gibbs. As a matter of fact, there's no Admiral aboard here. Where is he then? Aboard the flagship. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? Where's the flagship? Right now? Yes. In the Philippines. Hey, look. Somebody is on shore flashing our call. Yeah. But who'd know it? Ragged signaling. Sir, a light ashore giving our call. That's our call, all right, sir, but there's no shore station there. Flash an answer. Tell him to send. My compliments to Captain Irwin, and will he please come to the quarter deck? Yes, sir. What does he say? Nothing, sir. He keeps calling the Roanoke. Keep sending your answer. They've seen you. They're off. Two men on way, Miller Field, to kill Baron Lo Lomansky. I am... He stops, sir. Get his location and signature. Keep calling. No answer, sir. Have a patrol sent ashore to locate that signal light. Somebody who knows the town. Aye, sir. Young man, I tell you, I insist upon seeing the captain. But, madam, you don't understand. Don't argue with me. Regulations you. don't permit me. But... I'm joining Spencer and the others. I have an idea we'll pick up Gibbs at the airport. Yes, sir. Gibbs! That's all I wanted to know. What are we supposed to do?
difficult to look for. Somebody signaling from shore with a light. We'll never find them. We're meeting a patient on the 11 o'clock plane. Okay, doctor. We should be landing shortly, Baron. Somewhere around here. I don't see no signal lights. I should have stood in bed. And a boy, Rusty. Chips, so maybe a reward out for him. Oh, look where you little pigs. What, no Marines? Come on, Gibbs, give me that cannon. You're going back to the ship under arrest. You're A-W-O-L. We can't stop for that. There's a nobleman in the process of being assassinated. Malarkey. That's right. You know how the last war started. Sure. You don't want another one on your hands, do you? No, I mean... No. Come on, then. Who's that? Uh, an old friend of Doris's. You don't like it? Get out and walk. Be careful, Uncle. Don't let go. Don't worry about me. I used to bulldog steers. A windbag, just like Rusty. Come on, Chip. Step up. He's pronounced Lamazny Gibbs. At your age, fighting again. That a boy, Bruiser. My pal, my pal. What a tackle, what a tackle. Here's the other man, Captain. Take him away. My pal, the prof, made the tackle. Yeah, I saw that flying tackle, Professor. You know, a fellow brought me down with one of those in the Yale Navy game in 1906. That was me. Now, boys, open your hammersmiths to page 12. I can't guarantee that this will make uh, rear admirals out of all of you. However, algebra is a great toner-up of the mental processes. I know I'll never learn this. Hey, Prof, what is this? Binomials. Binomials. And what are you supposed to be now? A warrant officer, darling. The real thing this time. 
Honestly, I've got the papers to prove it. It was the real thing, wasn't it? When you said you loved me? I haven't got the papers to prove it. But we could get them tomorrow. 